shalom to everyone. We bid you peace and love. We ask everybody to just join in with us with prayer. And then we're going to get into tonight's lesson. Okay? Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity yes. to where we can just study your word and be able to share what it is that you have given us with the understanding uh, where you said that your Raha Kadash would bring things back to our memories. And we just yes. thank you right now. We just ask for your presence. We ask for your anointing because we know the anointing is what destroys yokes and removes heavy burden. And we yes. thank you that you have allowed us to have that desire and that hunger and that thirst after your righteousness. For you say they, that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. And we thank filled. you as yes. we do in our study that yes. you told us to study to show ourselves approved yes. unto you, Yahuwah, a workman that needs not be shamed, but the rightly divide the word of truth. And we just ask that you will cultivate the hearts and the minds of the listeners, that the word will fall on good ground and bring up the fruit that you was intended for it to bring up. We just thank you right now for your set apart spirit we thank you right now for your shekinah glory we thank you right yes. now for your wisdom we thank you right now for your understanding and we come against any and all satanic forces every assignment that the enemy has assigned against this lesson on today yes. because our desire is to please you and yes. to lift you yes. up and we thank you for it right now we already know you said bring your word back to your remembrance mm. and we know you said in your word where two or three are gathered in your name that you would be there in yes, the midst and we yes. thank you right now for right. your anointing Let we thank you shoot. right now for your Let spirit we thank you right now for 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 your completeness your and way. we just thank you because we give you reverence we know that it's have not by our way. power nor way. by our might but it is by your rahakadash and we thank have you for way. it right now because we desire to please you when we answer in the call you say that your spirit is send walking it, to and fro it, to it. see who you can show mm. yourself mightily through yes. and at this particular time we thank you thank that you found you. favor with my husband yes. and myself to yes. be vessels to be used yes. mightily of you and we just thank you for yes. all these blessings through your son Yeshua name amen and amen amen we thank my wife for that prayer but on this afternoon, we bring you joy because this lesson here exposes the real true spirit that is at work against us. We know that everybody always say that the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that he's your enemy. We know he is the enemy. But the funny thing about it is the enemy a lot of times sit back and watch you destroy your own self through the lack of knowledge. Because you don't know, you feel like it's all right. I got away with it because I didn't know. I'm going to use what the apostolic faith has taught me because I'm not going to sit here and deny For 13 years, the apostolic faith was my vehicle. I'm going to clean my camera because I want to make sure that it's clean there. There you go. It was my vehicle. It was my life. 13 years. Everything that my ministry is based on came through the apostolic faith. Do I knock their teachings? I can't knock anything because I'm not anybody judge. 
I'm not anybody condemner. I'm not anybody executor. I has no heaven or no hell to put anybody in. All I can do is give you the word. That's all I can do. To give you what is given unto me. Now, if you receive it, fine. If you don't, fine. But there's one thing I want to get out the way that a lot of you try to use as an excuse to do what you want to do. You will read a scripture and you will say, well, that ain't what I believe and that ain't what I'm praying to or that ain't what I'm saying. So it don't apply to me. I hate to break this to you. But when he said my people perish for the lack of knowledge, he's not only talking about a certain set of people. He's talking about everybody who have the access to get this thing right, but choose not to get it right because Y'all remember we used to laugh at the Baptist people because they used to come with this saying, born a Baptist, die a Baptist. Well, all you religious people have picked up that saying and you have closed your minds off because you feel like you got the right truth. Well, I'm going to say this also to you. Well, at one time, I knew I had the right truth. You couldn't tell me apostolic wasn't the way. That was at one time. Until I came into the fullness of the knowledge. So we know how the adversaries say, that, hey, that he will, there you go, you come on into this a little bit with us, they can see you, see, there you go, oh, you just going to read, say hello to everybody, okay, now, first I need you to read me Revelation 10 and 11, because this is the basis this is the foundation on what is being said today. To steal, kill, and destroy. That's going to be the name of the lesson. And when you look this up on YouTube, look up steal, kill, and destroy. Come on, Revelation 10 and 11. T.S. Hmm. Uh, they may not understand any T.S. We're going to use King James and then we're going to go back to the T.S. to help them understand. Come on. Um, and he said unto me. And he said unto me. Thou must prophesy. Thou must prophesy. Again before many people. Again before many people. And nations. And nations. And tongues. And tongues. And kings. And kings. See, I want to clarify this. I'm not knocking no other movement. No fire baptized. No Baptist. No Presbyterian, no Orthodox, none of them. I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking your, your apostolic, your holiness. I'm not knocking it. But he told me that I must bring this word before everybody. Because why? How can I change the truth? Let me see. Let me think on this. Uh, how? How can you change the truth? By adding something. By adding something to it or, or, taking, something or taking something away. And see, a lot of times, the adding to and the taking away is so subtle, you don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. You would think that I am doing the right thing. What do you say, miracle? 
Oh, uh, yes, but you really not. These young people in here, they will amaze you how much they know the word. But anyway, I'm going to give you a story, and I want you to listen to the story a quick like, and then we're going to move on. Let's say that you was married to somebody for 12 years, and you got used to their birthday, let's say, in May the 15th. You got used to the anniversary, let's say, in December. May and December was the most popular month for the years that you was married to this person. And let's say that you and this person had a divorce. So you went and started talking to somebody else. A lot of y'all sitting out there saying about, we don't believe in divorce, we don't believe in that, we don't believe in that. Shut up, we don't even don't wanna hear that because that ain't what the story is about. The story is about what I'm trying to show you. You get with somebody else. And when you get with that person, they tell you their birthday and they tell you their, and y'all know your anniversary date, but it's not in May. Their birthday is not in May and your anniversary date is not in December. But you look at that person and you tell that person, because I'm so familiar with the dates in May and December, let's make your birthday in May. <laughs> let's make our anniversary in December. How do you think that person will react to that? God, they will look at you like you crazy, right? So my question is this. How come you trying to bring your past beliefs and your past understanding to serve a Elohim with the old things that you used to do? What you mean, preacher? Okay. You took his commandments and instead of you obeying them, you said, well, since it really don't apply to us because we're not living up under the law, which you are, which you are then this don't apply to me. So if that don't apply to you, then you might as well tell your mate that their birthday don't matter. You might as well tell them that your anniversary don't matter because I'm going to continue to do the same thing what I've been doing because why? I'm so used to that. Now, did that story make any sense to you? Because why? You're continuing to do and serve uh, L-O-M which you call God you continue to serve him because it feels right to you is you serving it his way? no is you following his commandments? no you following the same characteristics of what you had with the other lover and you make him trying to make this lover agree with what you did in the old. What you mean? Okay, you would say, I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped partying, I stopped doing this, I stopped doing that. But there's one thing you have not changed. Your openness. To be able to open and take in new things to be able to build on your foundation. You won't do that. Why? Listen to me. The four things that the adversary come to kill, steal, destroy is what? First, the commandments. He loves to kill that out your life because you know if you don't keep the law, you don't love Yahuwah. Second thing he tore was 
the birth. Because if I get you confused on the birth and you don't keep the commandments, then you can't know who he is. Third thing he get and tear you up on his death and burial. Because why? If you don't understand the time that he died and when he was buried, then you will never get the three days and three nights, and you know the fourth thing is his resurrection. These four things the adversary has killed, steal, and destroyed in your religious walk. What you mean? Watch this. Yahuwah gave commandments to Adam and Eve. What happened? They disobeyed. He gave commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai. And what did the people do? They disobeyed. they disobeyed. Now watch this. Here it comes now. He took the name off of the original person who was born. Not only did he took the name off the person, he changed and put December the 25th as his birthday. And he got the whole world saying, Christ was born. Now, if the commandment they disobeyed and failed. They didn't follow what Moses said in the tablets. Well, when Yahuwah wrote it with his finger on the tablet, they didn't follow that. Now they hear and they're smiling and jumping and laughing and singing, having commemorate service and all this on December saying, Christ! was born. Jesus of Nazareth was born on the December 25th. And to top it off, they say that he rose Sunday morning. That's why you have your Sunrise services on the morning of Easter. Now that is beautiful. That is beautiful. That is the best deception that makes the word that says even if it was possible, even the elect state would be food. And a lot of us was food. Watch this. I'm going to show you how easy it is. How easy it is to fall for deception. Watch this. Go with me Matthew 1. And 21. But first, I want you to read, go to Matthew 1. Matthew 1 and 1. 1 and 1. And I want y'all to listen at this. Which version? What version you got? The scripture. Go to the um, King, James. King James first. And I'm going to show you something. All right. Matthew 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Stop right there. The book of the generation. Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ. Now go to the ISR. The book of the genealogy of Yeshua. Okay, the book of the genealogy of Yeshua. Now when you read them two things, your first mind say, there is no difference. But I want everybody. It's a difference in geometry. <laughs> she caught it real quick. I want everybody. First, if you will, 
Look up the definition of genealogy and see what it says. I know what it Define says. Define genealogy. I know what it says. Genealogy, a line of descent traced continuously from an ancestor. A line of descent traced continuously from an ancestor. That means that it is a countable resource. Meaning that this line you can trace from one person to another person to another person to another person that does not error, right? That's genealogy, okay? Define generation. Define generation. What is it? It got okay in the I'm sorry. Define generation. All of the people born and living at about the same time regarded collectively. Now, tell me how can all of the people born at the same time define a genealogy? A generation is one. See, a lot of you don't realize. And when you go further and you look at these words, it says accountable, the descent of a person. Now, this is genealogy. Is accountable, the descent of a person, family, group, or ancestor, a lineage, or prestige, meaning a line of people. When you do generation, is the fact of creating something or bringing something into being productivity or creation meaning in a genealogy there is nothing created but in a generation meaning that the generation of the 20th century that ain't got nothing to do with the generation of the 1900s or the 1800s because a generation meaning that years, that 10 years mm -hmm. is a generation, 10 years. Mm -hmm. My question is this, if you don't notice the little subtle things, you gonna miss it all. And you will never have noticed the difference, because why? Most of it's so easy. Come here, watch this, watch this, watch this. Come with me to Jude, first chapter, fourth verse. Watch this. Jude only have one chapter, my wife say. So go to that one chapter. Verse four. Verse four. Uh-oh, which one? Yeah, that'd be fine. For certain men have slipped in. Certain men have slipped in, and your old version says certain men have crept in. Come on. Whose judgment was written about long ago. Whose judgment was written about long ago, meaning that the prophets spoke on these men way before these men crept in. Come on. Wicked ones. Wicked ones. Perverting the favor. Perverting the favor. Of our Elohim. Of our Elohim. For indecency. For indecency. And denying. And denying. The only master. The only master. Yahuwah. Yahuwah. And our master. And our master. Yahuwah. Yahuwah. Messiah. Messiah. Now, certain ones crept in. And spied out, as your old virgin would say, the same one that you speak of in your book is the same teachings that you are following right now. What you mean? Go with me to Daniel 725. Same ones that you read about in your book is the same ones every bit of your faith, your beliefs, the way that you're conducting yourself, you are following. And you're not even realizing this is what you're following. 
You got it? Yes. Read it. Daniel 7 and 25. Daniel 7 and 25. Read. And it speaks words against the Most High. And it speaks words against the Most High. And it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High. It wears you out and beats you down and gets you so confused that you get tired and you say, what's the use? And it intends to change appointed times and laws. There it goes. Read that again. And it what? And it intends to change appointed times and laws. It intends to change appointed times and laws. And they are given into its hands for a time and times and half a time. Now, if you just understood, you're giving into this hand. Meaning that you are turned over. Because see, for a season, the Israelites, who was really the real tribe, their eyes is blinded. That they didn't even understood and see the Messiah. Why they didn't see Yeshua? Because it was prophesied that he came to his own people and they received him not. Now, I'm going to show you something. If the name of the Father was so holy that they wouldn't even pronounce it, then let me ask you something. Why can you pronounce the name of the Son? Now, in your book, you don't even have the name of the Father. You got God. You got Lord in your book. You teach God and Lord in your book as the Father. But then you are able to come down and pronounce the son name who you say, now watch how this don't make no sense, who you say is the Father in the flesh. You say Jesus is God in the flesh, but you can't pronounce his name in the Old Testament because you were taught it was so sacred, it couldn't be pronounced. Well, that's a lie. That's the worst teaching lie that y'all have been putting down because why? The name of the Father, his covenant name, if it revealed to me as Yahuwah, it should be revealed to you. But your book is taken out of. But I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm going to show you the change of the times and seasons. Okay. You and I know that the calendar that we have right now is the Georgian, Georgian calendar. I might be saying it wrong, but it's the Georgia. Let me spell it for you so you will understand which calendar that we... Gerald, say it again. There you go. The Georgian. The Georgian calendar. And on the Georgian calendar, it is based on four seven days weeks. And we always based everything around this four, seven days week. Because I'm going to show you how crazy times has really changed. Y'all have adopted that Sunday is the Christian holiday and Saturday is the Jewish holiday. Both is wrong and a lie. And I know a bunch of y'all Jewish believing, Christian walking, breath talking people out there is falling over right now because why? They saying, where is your proof? Well, before the Georgian calendar, it was the Julian calendar. And before the Julian calendar, it was a predesto Julian calendar. And this calendar was back there in the times of 
Yahuwah, and he resonate all the way to the times of Yeshua, and the calendar didn't change until the year 63 BC. This calendar was in effect doing good. The Julian calendar started in 63 BC. And it came all the way up to 37 AD. You want to go look it up? Look it up. But the thing about this calendar was it had eight days. But because the Romans sat down and through their pagan beliefs, worshiping the sun god, decided that we are going to bring a Sunday law in. And we're going to do away with the new beginning day, which was the eighth day, meaning new beginning. We're going to do away with that day. Because why? That day is not the day that our God is the day of. Our God is the sun God. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to change time, season, if you will. Go back and read that again. That was Daniel, right? Seven. 725. And it speaks word against the Most High. Mm -hmm. And it wears out the set apart ones of the Most High. Okay, first let me come back to the first part of that so you will understand that it speaks words against the Most High. They set themselves up in a temple that you go pray to them. And you tell them what you did. And they give you forgiveness for your sins. Okay. I'm going to show you how it switched from that in their belief, how it is in your beliefs too. You will go and you will tell your pastor every Sunday morning or every Tuesday night, Pastor, I want to talk to you. And you and him will go into his office and you will tell him about your troubles. And he will sit there give you an answer. But you would say, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. Well, my question is this. If Yahuwah is your father, if Yahuwah is your all in all, why haven't you talked to him first? And y'all going to say, who, 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 who would you, if God, as you know him, is your God, why don't he talk to you? But you'll go to a man to get answers to a godly problem. Just like the Romans do. But only is in a subtle way. Because this man... He's a man of God. Yeah. Oh, he's a man. Say, say it again. They'll say, but he's a man of God. They'll say, but he's a man of God. Yes, that is so true. But watch how I tear this up. He's a man of God, but he ain't God. Watch this. This real. Oh, well, he have authority over us. Who say so? You give him authority. Come on, read the next verse. Um, right next to bar, and they. And they. Okay, come on. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no. and it wears out the set apart ones of the Most High. And it wears out the set apart the ones of the Most High because hold still. I don't want you to read. I want you to come and understand. This is where the 27th verse of that chapter makes sense. And it's saying they should wear out. The set apart ones of the most high. I need you to start at 27. And the rain. And the rain. And the rulership. And the rulership. And the greatness and of the, the rains uh, under all the heavens. Okay, see? The rains and the rulership and the rains under all heaven you have given to this 
pastor, as you say, come on, shall be given to the people. Mm -hmm. The set apart ones of the Most High. Mm -hmm. His reign is an everlasting reign, mm -hmm. and all rulership shall serve and obey him. Him, not pastor. And what it says right there? The next this, verse? This is the end of the matter. This is the end of the matter. As for me, uh -huh. Daniel, mm -hmm. my thoughts greatly alarmed me, mm -hmm. and my color changed, mm -hmm. and I kept the matter in my heart. Because Daniel knew good and well that everybody was serving the king. Talks to the king. Whenever Yahuwah is telling him, I am the one. Y'all have given these pastors so much power that they can tell you when you can go out of town, when you can talk to your husband, when you can fix dinner, when you better be in church, when you don't supposed to be in church. And he's a man just like you. Furthermore, you need to really investigate what church really is. Yes. And you will see the hypocrisy what you are really in has nothing to do with the set apart ones. And you don't understand what the set apart ones is because why? You is drunk with the fornication. Come with me, come with me, come with me. Go with me to Isaiah. 14 and 13. I'm going to play with you for a few minutes and then I'm going to tear you up and show you how everything was changed. Isaiah 14 and 13. Mm -hmm. For you have said in your heart. You have said in your heart. Let me go up to the heavens. Let me go up to the heavens. Let me raise my throne let above. Me, come on. Above the stars of air. Mm -hmm. And let me sit in the mount mm -hmm. of appointment on the sides of the north. Mm -hmm. Now, who said that? Come on, who said that? Half of you ain't even got a clue. Your adversary, the devil said that. And the funny thing about it, what name you was given that is above everything else. Mm -hmm. Somebody saying Jesus? Mm, I know y'all saying Jesus. You're saying it right. But my question is this. <coughs> Ask yourself for real now. When you really do the study, ask yourself how can that be? When his name, the name of Jesus, only been around for 400 years. Ask that name. Come on now. I mean, you're going to get mad at me, which I don't care. But Yahuwah told me I must prophesy this thing again. Because my first prophecy, I stood for that same name what you do. Watch this, watch it. I'm gonna, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna help you out a little bit more. Come on, baby. Mm. Oh, I need you to come on and give me. Ooh, come on back in, paper. Give me Revelation 13, 7, and 8. I want you to listen at this. Whoops. Yeah. Look at the little pretty one. Say, hey, baby. Oh. There you go. I got you. Say, hey, look at that. Look at the pretty one. Hey, I'm going to puke all over you. All righty. Back to the word. We, you don't see the baby. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Seven. And eight. Yes, ma'am. And it was given to him to fight with the set apart ones. And it was given unto him to fight with the set apart ones. And to overcome them. And to overcome them. And authority was given to him. And authority was given to him. Over every tribe every and tongue tribe, and nation. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. 
And all those dwelling on the earth. And all those dwelling on the earth. Whose names have not been written in the book of life of the slain lamb. Now I want to stop right there. And I want you to ask yourself really. And this is really going to make a lot of you mad. If you don't know the name of the Father, you call him God and Lord. Then you worship in a name that been made up 400 years ago and you're giving it all power, all glory, all authority, all everything. Is your name really written in the book of life? Now you need to ask yourself that question. Because here this black preacher that don't have no teeth hauling, bald head, looking you in your face, Point out the truth to you. And you so stubborn and stinking and, and, and so set in your ways that you even won't hear the words, the actual words. Now, if you're not calling his right name and you're not praying and talking and this is what you finna say, well, God knows my heart. Miracle. That's what you're saying. God knows my heart, and God knows <coughs> that I'm praying unto him. My question is this. Do he? And what makes you so sure that you can call the wrong name, you can worship the wrong day, you can emphasize with the wrong person, but still come out to be right? Now, how is that? You help me out on this. If you take the wrong medicine at the wrong time with the wrong dose, what happens to you? Get you get sick or die. or die. So, how do you expect that you're going to pray in the wrong name, worship the wrong title, lift up a made up name and you still be right because you say he knows who I'm talking to in my heart whenever the right name is given to you but you reject it for the wrong name his name is Yahuwah his son name is Yahshua no now you ain't got no more excuse anybody who look at this video you cannot walk away and say, I did not know. I'm going to put another nail in your coffin right now. Say it again. Once you know the truth, you have to walk therein. You got to walk therein once you know the truth. I'm going to put another nail in your coffin. Go with me to Daniel 6 and 5. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm all over it tonight. Because I got, I, I got some stuff I'm going to really give you. Daniel six and five. Six and five. Then these men said. Then these men said. We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel. <laughs> Listen to me. We ain't gonna find any occasion against this Daniel. Unless we find it against him <clears throat> concerning the law of his uh -huh. Okay, hey, what's up, Flex? Unless. We find it concerning the law against his heart. And if you know what that meaning, they saying against his what? Creator. Father. Creator. We can't find nothing wrong against him. <clears throat> Unless we find something concerning the way he worshiped. And the funny thing about it is that's going to get you. 
if the way you worship wasn't important, then no way they could have gotten Daniel on the way he worshiped. Mm -hmm. It was easy; would have been easy for Daniel to slip through and say, hey, you know, this is just the way I worship. And God knows my heart. Or the king knows my heart. When Daniel wasn't worshiping the king, right? Right. Mm -hmm. This is where Daniel got in trouble, as you would say, and got thrown in the lion's den because why? He bowed down and prayed three times a day out of his window to his God, as you say. Now, these are your words. Read them in your book, in your King James printed up book he got in trouble for bowing down three times a day praying to the God of Daniel right right so my question is this if Daniel was calling on the name of Yahuwah and not on the name of the king but he was praying, right? He was worshiping. He was bowing down like everybody else did. But he was saying it to his God. Like you bow down and you worship and you give it to the name of Jesus. Smiling and jumping and clapping. And you even took that name and said that's the name of the Father. You gave Jesus to the Father, Jesus to the Son. You gave Jesus to the Holy Ghost. And you pray and pray and pray and pray. And watch this. The same way the king disciplined Daniel. Because he made the decree and the oath saying that anybody caught not bowing down to this specific thing shall be persecuted. What makes you think you, that our Yahuwah is saying? Hmm? Oh, come on here now. This thing is really getting close to you. Because you've been praying God and Lord for so long. And was that okay? That was good because why? You didn't know no better. But now that you know better. See, the funny thing about it, there is nothing new under the sun. Hmm? Nothing new. If you will, and I know this is off the script, but I have to speak what the set-apart spirit is saying to me. Go in second Kings and find Josiah. Because I need y'all to hear this. It's in Second Kings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would you find it for me? The say, um, speak in your phone and ask, where in the Bible is Josiah? Where in the Bible speaks of the King Josiah? And it'll come up. Here's some information. <clears throat> where is Josiah in the Bible? Mm -hmm. According to Wikipedia, according to the Hebrew Bible, Josiah was the son of King Amon and Jedha, yes. the daughter of Adaya of Bozgan. Yes. In what verse and chapter that is? It should show you. Second King something. Now, yeah, let me help you out. It's in Kings. Oh, I cut my phone off. Right, Josiah, the king of Judah. Hit it. It's just a picture. It's just a picture. Okay. Second Kings 22. Second Kings. Do it now. I know it was Second Kings. Help me out. 22 and 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's doing that, Josiah. So I need, uh, yeah, I need you to read when he was eight years old and began to reign. All right. Second Kings 22, mm -hmm. verse 1. 
Um, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty-one years in Jerusalem. And Listen. his Go ahead. and his mother's name was Yadiah, mm -hmm. the daughter of Adiah of Bosqua. Mm -hmm. And he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah, mm -hmm. and walked in all the ways of his father David, and did not turn aside right or left. Did not turn aside right or left, come on. And it came to be mm -hmm. in the 18th year of sovereign Josiah. Okay, listen to me. In the 18th year of his reign, meaning he was 18 years old. That the sovereign sent Shephan, the mm -hmm. scribe, mm -hmm. son of Ashul, son of Mishum, to the house of Yahuwah, saying. Listen now, I want you to listen. For 18, for, for 10 years, because he was eight years old when he came. For 10 years, they've been serving this way. 10 years. So he sent his scribe to the house of Yahuwah, saying, Go up to Helqua, the high priest. Go up to the Helqua, the high priest. And let him weigh the silver which has been brought into the house of Yahuwah. Meaning, I'm bringing you some money to repair the house of Yahuwah. Which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people. Which they have gathered up from the people to restore. Come on. And let them give it unto the hand of those doing the work. Meaning that he's paying the workers for the work that they've done. Which a lot of you churches, you fall so slack on this. You figure because of the church you're supposed to just do the work. But that ain't the way that the book speaks. The book speaks, pay a man for what a man does. But I'm not getting into that. That's another subject. Come on, read. Who are the overseers in the house of Yahuwah? Mm -hmm. And let them give it to the to those who are in the house of Yahuwah mm -hmm. doing the work mm -hmm. to strengthen the breach of the house. Yes, to make repairs. Come on. To carpenters and to builders See? and to stone masons mm -hmm. and to buy timber and hewn stones mm -hmm. to strengthen the house. Yes, he paying them. However, let not the silver given into their hand be reckoned with them. For they are acting trustworthy. They meaning that whatever he give to them, let them not do nothing different with it, but do what you're supposed to. Come on. And Hakuel the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe. Now watch this. As they rebuilt the house, the high priest came up and told the scribe who was sent from Josiah. What did he tell him? I have found the book of the Torah in the house of Yahuwah. I have found the book of the Torah in the house of Yahuwah. Now watch this. And Hekwa gave the book to Shephan uh -huh. and he read it. And he read it. And Shephan the scribe came to the sovereign uh -huh. and brought word to the sovereign saying, saying, again saying, your servants have gathered the silver mm -hmm. that was found in the house and have given it into the hand of those who do the work, mm -hmm. who oversees the house of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And Shaphan the scribe informed the sovereign, saying, Hekulah, the priest has given me a book. Mm -hmm. And Shaphan read it before the sovereign. Mm -hmm. And it came to be, when the sovereign heard the words of the book of the Torah, that he tore his garments. Stop right there. Whenever the sovereign or y'all in your book it would read, you know, Josiah read the book of the Torah. He tore his garment. Now, have you who read this story over and over and over, have you understood the magnitude of the tearing of the garment? I know you didn't because you just felt like he was mad and he tore his garment. But listen, whenever they tore their garment, that was a sign of being pulled apart from the old. Now I'm looking for the new because I have torn away my sins 
in wrath and in anger and showing my sovereign one that this is not part of me. So I tore my garment. This is not a part of me. Come on. I don't know who or what that is, but Josiah knew that this, what he heard. And the sovereign commanded Hakla the priest, and Aquam son of Shaphan, and Arbar son of Machia, and Shaphan the scribe, Listen. and Asha a servant of the sovereign, saying, Go inquire of Yahuwah for me, mm -hmm. for the people, and for all Judah, mm -hmm. concerning the words of this book that has been found. Listen. For great is the wrath of Yahuwah that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book. Stop, stop, stop. Look at this. You, you, you ain't seeing this. Boy, he, boy, he's trying. Y'all excuse how it's freezing and coming off because why? He do not want you to hear this. But as he said, my, our fathers have not obeyed the words in this book. Now, my question is this. How can I teach you the right way when I don't even have the right way my own self? How can I teach you his name when I don't have his name in my own self? See, this is why the scriptures say that if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. This is why it plainly tells you, study, study to show yourself approval unto Yahuwah. You have to show Yahuwah that I am willing to dig through your word and find the truth. Amen. Because why? Listen to what happened in Josiah day. Come on. According to all is written concerning us. Mm -hmm. Then Hekaniah the priest and Ak Akram and Akbar and Shaphan and Asiah went to Hudah mm -hmm. the prophetess the wife of now Shh. stop stop right there you notice it said prophetess mm -hmm. meaning that it was a woman mm -hmm. for all y'all who sit out there and not women they went and this is in the Old Testament they went to the prophetess the wife of Shalom the son of to all the sons of Harry, the keeper of the wardrobe. Now she was dwelling. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You read. Now she was dwelling in Jerusalem mm -hmm. in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. And they spoke with her. Mm -hmm. And she said to them, Thus said Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, mm -hmm. Say to the man who sent you to me, mm -hmm. Thus said Yahuwah, See, I am bringing evil on this place and on its inhabitants. All the words of the book which the sovereign of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other mighty ones to provoke me with all the works of their hands. Listen, please stop right there. To all y'all cross building, David star wearing, crescent moon toting, all y'all who last suppers, angels, carrying fish, putting on your cars. All you who Mary say, the Mary, Ma go ahead, dog. Mary, the mother of Jesus, mm -hmm. and, and you, 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 the bleeding statues, and, and the stigmatas, and all these evil stuff that y'all have going on, because I'm going to tell you, and it's really going to make you mad. Even the name of Jesus. And that really done fried a lot of you. That really done tore up a lot of you. This is why, as he said, I'm going to bring evil and wrath and vengeance upon you because now you know his name. It's not 
Jesus. You know his name is Yahshua. But yet and still, you still burn incense. Like I said, I don't burn no incense. I don't do no. You still send up prayers, your alms. You still make your children. You still make your children children. You buy them these little Jesus Bible little books. Everybody know the name of Jesus, but nobody know his covenant name. You know the made up name. Which when you see through this made up thing, watch this. Come on, finish reading that for me. Therefore, me out of the works of the hand, mm -hmm. and no, and so my wrath shall be kindled against this place and not be quenched. Mm -hmm. And to the sovereign of Judah, mm -hmm. who sent you to inquire of Yahuwah, say this to them. Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. Don't you listen. As for the words which you have heard, mm -hmm. because your heart was tender. Because, listen now, listen, and this is where I can throw my hands up. Because when I heard the name Yahuwah, see, did, did, did you see how it froze? As I heard the name of Yahuwah, my heart deceived it. Huh? I knew this was something to it. I studied it. So look, 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 see? I studied it. I studied it. Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yahuwah. You can freeze. You can go through technology. You can do whatever you want. But Yahuwah is Yahuwah. And ain't nothing you can do about it. And the funny thing about it, he's even your Elohim. But as we got, and our heart was tender. Because your heart was tender. And you humbled yourself before Yahuwah mm -hmm. when you heard what I spoke against this place mm -hmm. and against its inhabitants, that they would become a ruin and a curse, and did tear your garments and wept before me. Mm -hmm. I also have heard the I I also have heard declares Yahuwah. Therefore, see, I am gathering you to your fathers, mm -hmm. and you shall be gathered to you to your burial sight and peace mm -hmm. so that your eyes do not see all the evil I am bringing on this place and they brought word to the sovereign listen to it now these are not my words I didn't wrote this and you don't have to believe this but watch this your calendar that you love to jump on. You don't even realize that the real calendar, Saturday was the first day. Because it was named after the planet Saturn Day. And it was the first day of the week. Go study. Go look for your own self. Sun, as you said, solar day or Sunday is the second day of the week. Lunar, which means the moon god, was the third. Mars, which is the fourth day. Mercury, which is the fifth day. Jupiter, which is the sixth day. And Venus, which was the seventh day. All of them pagan days. But that's the way that the calendar looked. Before and now on the afternoon they shift Sunday to the first day of the week because they say this is the day that our Lord Jesus rose and he rose on the first day of the week so we're going to switch it to the first day of the week. Now you need to ask yourself, ask yourself this question. How can somebody rule on the first day of the week when they was only born 400 years ago? And I know, I know good well what you're finna say. I am an American and I speak English. You do. 
So why do you call our Mexican friends colos? That's not English. Why do you call them Jesus? Jesus? Hmm? Come on. Jesus. Come on, watch this. See, I'm finna show you how ridiculous your terminology is. And don't get me wrong, I didn't follow it my own self until I found out the truth. Because I defended it just as much as you. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. There was a religion, and, I, and, I, and I'm sliding this over because why I want you. I want to bring this closer to me. There was a religion, a religion that spread through the Roman Empire called Martyrism. Would you look up that word? M I T A. Okay, I'm going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down. Mm-hmm. And I want y'all to watch this. M I T H R A I S M. M I T H R A I S M. Yes, ma'am. The cult of the God. Tell me what. I want y'all to listen at this and I want you to look it up for your own self. What is modernism? Tell me out. The cult of the god Marthas, Marthas, who became popular among the Roman soldiers, who became popular among the Roman soldiers of the later empire, mm -hmm. and was the main rival to Christianity in mm -hmm. the first three centuries A.D. First three centuries A.D. Because you know, in the fourth century, watch this now. This is really going to get you. In the fourth century, Constantine. The Roman Emperor converted to Christianity, right? Right? Yes, he did. And when he converted to Christianity, he brought all the whole oh, 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 still, I need you to stick with Marism. Go back, yep, 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 go back to Marism. When he converted to Christianity, he brought all them over, all them pagan days. All the Armenian stuff, he brought them over and he incorporated it into Christianity. Now, I need you to read, uh, read that. That'll work. Read that. I want you to give you a little background on what Marxism is. Okay. Yeah. Moth racing. Moth racing. Mm -hmm. Is a Roman mystery religion that flourished in the second through the fourth centuries CE. Mm -hmm. Much is still unknown about this secretive set, mm -hmm. but it involved the worship of the Persian god Mothras in caves, a comical meal, and initially through seven stages of an astrology themed heresy. Mm hmm. Mothers is known almost entirely from physical artifacts and dictionary inscriptions and total over 400 arche archaeology find spots related to Mothers have been uncovered along with about 1,000 dictoria inscriptions and 1150 pieces of sculpture. Don't you stop right there. So this was widespread through the Romans. And the Romans, really, come on, come on, come on, Denise. And the Romans really believed this because it was right there alongside Christianity. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to hear this for yourself. Mm -hmm. Read that, write that, the time. Period. The time period in which Marxism flourished is better known. Thanks to the archaeology evidence, the cult of Marxism appears suddenly in the 2nd century mm -hmm. CE. Hundreds of inscriptions begin 
appearing after 136. Mm -hmm. It then died out with the rest of Greco-Roman paganism after the conversion of Constantine in the 4th century. Now you think about it. <coughs> what better <coughs> way to get a people to worship me the better way to get you worship me is to appear that I don't exist. Right? Come on. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm going to need you to read it. So after the thing of Constantine, and I told you in the beginning of the lesson, little subtle things is what he gets you in. After Constantine, in the 4th century, suddenly, come on, read it again. Marxism suddenly immer immersed in the Roman world has not been explained according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Mm -hmm. The most plausible mm -hmm. hypothesis seems to be that Roman Marxism was practically a new creation mm -hmm. wrought by a religious genius who may listen. have lived as late as C100 CE and would gave the old traditional Persian Ceremonies, a new platonic interpretation, interpretation that enabled Marxism to become acceptable to the Roman world. Now, my question is, what is that name that they have given unto the new found? Now, remember now, remember now, Constantine was a Roman, right? Mm. And... This thing spread, now I'm, now I'm going to show you how widespread it was. Paul had a lot of journeys in Turkey, or Istanbul, as you know. This thing was in Turkey. And Paul went up and said that they even had something to the effect, an altar to the unknown God. That they pray to an unknown God. And Paul took that platform and introduced them to Yahuwah. But after all this went through, there came a man, a ruler. And I want to get to that ruler, okay, right there, yes. Martha is frequently said to have been a great revival to early Christian, Christianity, Christianity. especially in popular books written by nuns specialists. Mm -hmm. According to most academic sources, however, the archaeology evidence does not support this claim. Come on. Although it was widespread in terms of geographic, Marthaism never had great numbers. Mm -hmm. Christianity was not terribly large or influential in this period either. either. Come on. A few hundred temp temples of Marthaism have been discovered across the Roman Empire, but they are all very small, according to the Oxford Dictionary of Classical Myth and Religion. Now watch this now. Watch this. In order for me, in order for me to be able to influence a lot of people with my belief, the only way to do it, which you know how the adversary does it, he will take a counterfeit belief and mirror it in to the true belief to get the people Follow something. Watch this. A lot of the people in the Old Testament got in trouble whenever the Lord said, Go in, destroy everything. Don't leave nothing, no grass, no cattle, no nothing. A lot of the people felt like, Well, this is a good altar. Let's clean it up. 
Let's sacrifice our burnt offerings on this altar to our Elohim. And this in wrath our Elohim. Because why? How can you take? Come on, yes, come on, don't worry, I'm getting to that. How can you take something that is dirty and try to put something clean on it and it don't get contaminated? Well, watch this. Come on, read for me, darling. Read it. Start where you are. Read it. Okay. Even if I were in service contempor contempor mm -hmm. writing the sleep, they would accommodate no more than 1% of the population. Scarcely the great rival to Christianity that inflated views of the cult have sometimes made it. Whether or not they were rivals, it is certainly possible that these two Contemporary communities had some influence on each other. Come on. In at least one area, it is clear that Christianity Ooh. adopted an aspect of Marxism. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You. Christianity <laughs> adopted an aspect of Marxism. It's clearly. It's clearly. It's clear that, Mar that Christianity. Adopted an aspect of Marxism. Now, how did they adopt it, the aspects of Marxism? Whenever Constantine said, I am a Christian. Hmm? Come on. The celebration of the birth of Christ on December the 25th. Here it comes. A tradition that began in the 4th century. Come on. A Christian writer admitted this in 320. Listen, listen, listen. Explaining, we hold this day holy not like the pagans because of the birth of the sun, S-U-N, S -U -N. but because of him who made it. December the 24th was also the birthday of the more popular Roman god known as the unconquered sun, S-U-N, with, with whom Constantine identified himself before his conversion to Christianity, who was closely associated with Marthism. Wow. And considering claims for Marthism influence on Christianity, Listen. it is important to remember that Marthism was a very secretive, initiatory cult whose belief, practices, and imagery were not known to the outside world. So it would not have been as easy for Christianity to borrow ideas from it as one might assume. Mm. It is also worth noting that two faiths, Developing in the same area of the world at the same time are likely to have similar ideas and practice, regardless of their level of interaction. Ritual, commune meals, and the theme of sacrifice for salvation. For instance, we com we're common not only to Marxism and listen. Christianity, but much of the ancient world. Stop right there. Watch this. See, a lot of y'all don't realize that they used to impregnate virgins on the altar, get these virgins pregnant. Three months after they have their babies, it's gonna tear you up now, they will sacrifice them babies on that same altar. Take their blood color an Easter egg as you know it but y'all go and y'all go find these colorful eggs they will take them eggs color them in the blood of the babies who they just sacrificed and dedicate them to the God Esther better known as you know it as Easter See, you just don't know how much the adversary have them twisted your worship. Do just like the book says. Come back. Worship Yahuwah. 
worship Yahshua. Yahshua is the door to Yahuwah. Get away from all this made up. I know a lot of you say King James Bible is the only Bible I know and raise and whatnot. So hey, he can't hold me for what I don't know. That is a lie. Because you forget in the scripture, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. You will be the least. The least. If not lost. I have no heaven or no hell to put you in. Come on, I'm going to give you a couple more scriptures. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 7 and 19. I wish y'all really get this study. I really wish you would get down and dig like I did. 1 Corinthians what? 1 Corinthians uh -huh, 7 okay. 19. Come on. The circumcision is not. The circumcision is not. And the uncircumcision is not. And the uncircumcision is not. But the guardian of the commands of Elohim but the, does matter. But the who? Guardian of the commands of Elohim uh -huh. does matter. Well, my question is this. What do you Christian believers have to lose by following what is written in the book. They teach you. Oh, they done away with all this. But nowhere in that book does it say this. That the laws that was given to Moses was void. Nowhere in that book does it say it. That them laws, even if you go in your book, he said, I give you two new commandments. That you love your neighbor at, like you love yourself. New commandments. Never did he did away with the old ones. So my question is there. How long are you going to be stuck between two opinions? Who are you going to serve? Is you going to serve your whore or are you going to serve man? Is you going to continue in the tradition that separated you from your Elohim? Now, I know y'all don't like this study. And I know a lot of people ain't even going to turn in or look or click it. But I'm going to tell you this. What you feel don't get you through the gates. What you think don't get you through the gates. Because he tell you, lean not to your own understandings. Watch this, watch this. I got one more for you. Come on to Acts 20 and 7. Let me stick this in there. No, I got two more because we're going to go to Revelation 13 and 18 too. And then I'll be finished. Acts 20 and 7. Yes. And on day one of the week, on day one of the week, the top ones having gathered together to break bread, the top ones have gathered together to break bread. Shaw, mm -hmm. intending to depart the next day, mm -hmm. was reasoning with them mm -hmm. and was extending the word till midnight. Now watch this. Y'all took this and said the first day of the week was Sunday. No, the first day of the week was Saturday according to the calendar that they was going by. See, there's something that you have to understand. The Sabbath day is not a set day. It's not just one day, one Sunday or one Saturday. The Sabbath day floats all through the whole calendar because why? It all operates on the new moon. 
A lot of you don't understand that. Whenever the first day of that month is, that's the new moon. And whatever day that first day falls upon, that's your Sabbath. But I'm going to show you why he's going to destroy and keep all this from you. Don't want you to do it. Don't want you. Come on to wrong Revelation 18. I mean 13 and 18. This is my last verse and my last showing because it wasn't done in the corner and I'm not going to try to fill you up with too much information because half of this information you're going to throw away anyway. But I'm hoping that the ones who get it, grasp it. Take it into their bosom and follow along. What does Revelation 13 Revelation 13 and 18. Here is the wisdom. Here is the wisdom. He who has understanding. You who have understanding. Let him calculate the number of the beast. Let you calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. It is the number of what? A man. A man. And his number is. And his number is. 600. 666. 666. Everybody gets to smile and say, that the mark of the beast. That's the mark of the beast. That mark is Nero. A Roman emperor who was chopping the heads off of the saints. John was telling you, be aware of the Roman influence. Because he said the, man, the number of a man. Of a man. And the Roman influence have filtered all the way through to even change your worship. And you may think that I am a Baptist or I am holiness, or I am fire baptized, or I am orthodox, or I am a Presbyterian, I am apostle. You may think that because of the division of the name on your door, but it don't change your worship habits. You can take a Sunday morning Bulletin. Them bulletins when they tell you the itinerary of the service. Mm -hmm. You can take one of them, program. one program, and you can pass it through every church that is here. And I guarantee you the format is the same. Don't change. You can look at your Sunday school books and it says international. Meaning that it is spoken all through the world. Nothing changed. You is jumping and having to realize you is already in the one world order. You don't realize that. You don't realize that your faith already is up on the, the one world order. Oh, okay. I'm going to show you how. You call your church steeples. Steeples. Where in the Roman days, they was obelisks. And every church got an obelisk on it. Meaning that they is worshiping the Son, God. And you worship the Son. You worship the one who was born December the 25th. You call him Jesus. But I want you to look at the depictions of him. He got a glow around his head. He got a wreath. Braided round his heart. 
And y'all don't understand none of what that means. You take it to be your religious push. But please, study into all that. I beseech you, brothers. I beseech you to study. Don't take my word for it. Look it up for your own self. And see how much deception you have been deceived. Because why? As Yahuwah says, not his will that any man should perish. He don't want you to perish. But he also wants you to pledge your allegiance to him. Hold up that blood-stained banner to him. Pray and thank him. Worship him. The only one and true Elohim. Yahuwah. The creator. The one who exists. Through Yahshua. The one who saves. Choice is yours. Choice is yours. Josiah sung it out to the people. Had it read before Judah and Jerusalem. He read it before them. Just like right now, I'm giving it to you. Mark these words. Who is coming? And those who don't have his name written in their hands and their foreheads, it's going to be lost. Jesus will not save you. You don't like that, but that's true. The name of Jesus will not save you because that's not his name. Yeshua the Messiah. Mm. Yo, Jesus Christ, that's English mixed with Greek, Italian. Our Elohim was Hebrew and not from the Babylonian people. Understand that he moved at his name. Power in his name. Yes, glory. I have seen things shift. And I know a lot of you are going to say, yeah, I've seen things shift in the name of Jesus too. But if you remember, whenever Moses met Pharaoh, <laughs> Pharaoh, musician, cast their rods down and they became serpents. Moses cast his down and it became a serpent. So we understand that terminology is the same. But except Moses on ate all the other serpents. Same thing. Yo, Jesus, you see miracles. My Yeshua, I see miracles. But the funny thing about it, I can call on Yeshua today, and today he'll answer. I don't have to wait. It's proven. He proved that to me today. I don't have to sit here and wait for a appointed time, because why? I serve a right now Elohim, and his name is Yeshua. See, you see, 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 you don't understand why I say his name is Yeshua because through him I get to Yahuwah. Yes. 
See, it's the, name. the name. Understand. It's the name. Say it again. Say it loud. It's it's the name that you're using. It's nothing wrong with you believing and trusting, but it's the it's the name that we're trying to get y'all to change. It's nothing wrong. We don't want you to think that your belief in believing in a higher power or a greater source, as we may say, it, we're not knocking that. But what we are saying is that the name, we should be using his covenant name. And once we begin to use his covenant name, you will see the same works that he did. You'll be able to see that. You'll be able to, to experience his Shekinah glory when mm. you come together mm. in the name of Yeshua. Mm. And you call on Yahuwah and his Rahakadash. You'll be able to see it because we are not using a translated name. We are using his covenant name. We're not using a nickname. We are using his real name. And most people will respond to you quicker when you use their real name instead of a made-up nickname. So we want you to understand that we need you to change the name because of the translated version. When you call it and you use it, it has lost its power. Yahuwah is more powerful than God and Lord because that's the first stage. Yeshua is more powerful than Jesus because his name is Yeshua. We got to still go through him in order to get to the Father. Use his covenant name. First time for everything because they, they told me they weren't going to even be seen. But, Jody uh -huh. and Renee, you next. I know it. You tell me what you're not going to do. <laughs> I just wanted to get an understanding. But it's going, going to come a time that you're going to show. Poochie, thank you for the new coming in. Hey, Poochie. You have become curious. And may Yahuwah bless you, Poochie, for coming to the knowledge. Logan, thank you. You begin to call and understand. You're trying. Adrian, we salute. Quanisha, we salute. Because everybody that is up under this covenant, up under the banner of Mercy Way, we're not saying we're the only ones that's going in. But at least we know we got it from the beginning. We ain't reading and studying anything that's been translated, anything that's been made up, anything that's been revised, anything that's been rewritten. We are studying the true word as they spoke it. Shalom to you, O Heavenly Father. We've given you all praise and all honor and all glory for the words that you have placed in our hearts. We are asking you right now that when you lift up Paul, Shalom come unto us. Whenever we lift up, all oh, glory come to us. Whenever we lift up, all oh, action begin to move. The atmosphere shift and change. Foundations torn up. When we lift up our hands and say, Yahuwah is all in all. How things begin to change and move. We thank you for your presence. We thank yes. you for your hard doctrines yes. that we saw illuminated on the last video as you came in when we were singing praises unto your name. You illumified the whole video and showed the, that whenever your train filled the temple, how smoke begin to rise and how the things begin to shake and tremble. You showed us yes. that we are a part of your kingdom. Yes, glory. I cry to you on this video yes. that many hearts may be open, yes. eyes may be understand yes. and see that they take the scales from off their eyes and their spiritual eyes begin to open yes. and see that you is real. Yes. That glory. you ordained this. Yes. 
Father, we ask you yes. that don't allow the adversary to block their mind yes. or block their heart. Yes. We must do just like they did in the day of, of Josiah. We yes. must let our hearts become tender. Yes. And absorb this thing, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your name, Yahuwah. Yes. We must absorb it. Yes. We must take it in. Yes. We must begin to allow it yes. to begin to work within us, Lord. Yes. We're going to have to begin to take out all these other things that have poison us. Yes, Yahuwah. Oh, Yahuwah. Yes. yes Our Yahuwah. Father. Yes, Yahweh. Oh, you. Yahuwah. Yahuwah. We give you honor, we give you praise, we give you the magnification on this. Let your words be in our mouth and your ahadakas be in our heart that we may be able to worship and praise you in holy and the beautiness of holiness. We are holy because you are holy. I feel the spirit. Spirit just moving in me. I I feel the 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 rahadak is just on me right now, like a rushing mighty wind. I thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Yes, glory. May everyone that listen and see this video be blessed. Yes, through your anointing. Yes, I have done what you say, Father. Yes. Now we bring this to a close. Yes. Holy blessing we ask and through the name of Yeshua. Yes. We say the Amen and the Amen. Amen. Shalom be unto you.